Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Gigabyte sent over one of their Cream of the Crop Orange Extreme RTX 3080s for us to check out, so we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks in both Windows and Linux, and see how this card stacks up against the other 30 series GPUs that we've had through the studio so far. So let's check this one out. new 30 series NVIDIA GPUs have released, it's been pretty up and down with driver issues, supply and demand, and people just being generally unhappy with physically being able to get these cards into their systems at all. And there's been a lot of finger pointing, so what I'm going to do is disregard all of that because that's just not what we do here. We're here to take a look at a GPU that you may or may not be able to buy right now, but you'll probably be able to buy sometime in the near future. As a bit of a heads up, there's actually a lot of data to unpack in this video. There's actually chapters in all of our videos as well, so if you want to jump to a certain section of a video, it's just as easy as mousing over the progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description if you're on mobile. Also, we don't have a Founders 3080, so we can't compare any of our results to a Founders 3080 because we just don't have one. The Aorus Extreme RTX 3080 is built on the new NVIDIA Ampere architecture and features 10 gigs of GDDR6X memory. In terms of power delivery and consumption, it requires three 8-pin PCIe power connectors and will consume on average around 370 watts at full tilt. We recently changed our GPU video format and you guys responded really, really well to it. So with that said, let's kick it off with the benchmarks and comparisons and get all of that stuff out of the way first. So let's start with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magical little pause button at any time during the video to take a look at the graphs for a bit longer or just watch the video in half speed if they're not on your screen for long enough. As we've seen with all of these 30 series GPUs so far, 1080p really isn't their strong point, and the same thing is being echoed here with the Aorus Extreme RTX 3080. It's completely CPU bound in both Windows and Linux, and the 3080 is just not really designed for 1080p or even 1440p. And when we compare Windows and Linux, we're seeing the Linux performance being slightly better than Windows with Vulkan, and yeah, this is basically echoed for the rest of these benchmarks at all the other resolutions as well. And it's kind of this trend with Windows vs Linux in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Again, with 4K, we're seeing the same thing being echoed here with the Vulkan performance, and it slightly trumps DX12. The implementation from Feral is really good here, and it's relatively consistent across the board for this benchmark, which is why we use it, because it's super repeatable. Okay, let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We use the 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. Before someone comments something along the lines of, oh, you use OpenGL versus DX11 for comparison, we're comparing the out of the box experience. Those who know how to extract more performance out of the GPUs in Linux don't need videos like this one. This is just a quick reference guide for those people who are interested in the differences. First up with the 1080p Extreme benchmark, you'll notice that it's highly GPU bound and with the Aorus Extreme RTX 3080, it's about on par with the other 3080s that we've checked out in the past. In Linux with OpenGL, where we know how this performs as well and it doesn't perform as well. And we've tested this with other kernels and other distros and a lot of other different Linux combinations, but the reality is we're always seeing about the same results and we've addressed this multiple times in multiple videos. And what we're seeing with 1440p and 4K is about the same with both Windows and Linux as well. Next. 
Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance since the 3D engine it uses has been designed from the ground up with the low level Vulkan API calls and it really takes advantage of your 3D hardware. At 1080p, the Oryx Extreme shares about the same performance as all the other 3080s we've tested, and this is kind of the trend with Ampere. These cards just don't overclock very well. And this is also the same thing with Linux. And if we compare Windows and Linux, unlike Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we're seeing better performance with Windows than with Linux. And that's actually to do with the way that the engine's been built. And there's a few bugs with this version of Basemark as well. At 1440p, the differences are about the same as 1080p, and given what we know about Vulkan and how the API interacts with the hardware, it scales quite well and there's no surprises here. Okay, let's circle back to Shadow of the Tomb Raider with some DLSS and Ray Trace Shadow benchmarks. Although Shadow of the Tomb Raider only supports DLSS 1.0, we did include Death Stranding because of its DLSS 2.0 support. We ran two different combinations of tests with DLSS enabled and Ray Trace Shadows enabled and both enabled at 1440p and at 4K. 1440p, the results are pretty much as you'd expect. It's really echoing what we saw with the three earlier tests for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. If you move on to 4K, we're seeing the Aorus Extreme RTX 3080 compare with the other 3080s that we've tested. Again, these cards don't have a lot of variance. Let's move on to Death Stranding. We decided to do a 2080 Ti versus 3080 DLSS 2.0 comparison with both DLSS modes enabled, both performance and quality, and completely disabled at both 1440p and 4K at max settings. Wow, that was a mouthful. We also tested some professional workloads as well. Now these aren't all of the workloads that we want to test in the future, but this is just to give you an idea. Now most people will overlook these type of benchmarks, but they're really important for people who are buying these GPUs for workstations. And we decided to test all of our GPUs with two Blender scenes, both the Classroom and BMW scenes, and also Premiere Pro rendered times with our benchmark project that we've featured many times in the past. Finally, Premiere Pro and Adobe Media Encoder. Now, this is an indication of expected performance, and this one is really dependent on the CPU as well, but this will give you an idea of what we saw. The render times are not that different across the board, and they're all within a margin of error for CUDA. We also ran our one hour stress test in Fermark, and we couldn't get the Aorus Extreme RTX 3080 above 62 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. This result is actually pretty good, but also be aware, we're running on an open air test bench, and the results in a closed system will most likely be far different from what we observed, but if I don't include those numbers, people will complain, so. Here they are. As far as what the Aorus card offers compared to the Founders card, you're getting RGB if you're into that kind of thing. There's actually quite a lot of RGB, but the lighting's been changed from the 2080 and 2080 Ti Extreme cards that we saw last generation. You're getting a programmable screen that you can display information about your GPU on, and you can get this at a glance. You can even do custom images and animations and whatever you want, basically, you can do it with this. It's a cool feature, but I I think it's pretty overkill for a GPU. I don't think you really need this. You're also getting a silent card with zero coil wine. You have to remember as well, 
This is an open air test system. You can hear absolutely everything. And we didn't hear this card make a sound at all. They really nailed the acoustics with this card. This is easily one of the most silent 30 series cards that we've ever seen. You're also getting a card with a dual BIOS switch, which you can switch between the OC and silent modes. Not that you need the silent mode because the card's completely silent anyway. You're getting a card that doesn't require a new power connector. You're also getting one of the biggest GPUs that I've ever seen ever, full stop. It takes up about four slots. Now this might be a little bit discouraging, but the reality is you're getting a dead silent GPU that runs very, very cool. And I can see why they opted for this design. I was a bit skeptical at first with the need for it to be so massive, but with that max cover cooling that they're, they're pushing with all the marketing, it actually makes the card dead silent. There's, there's, there's no other way to put it. And I'm all about that silent PC life. Overall, I'm digging the design and performance of the Aorus Extreme RTX 3080. Thermally, it's a whole lot better than the 20 series cards. We all know what happened with that stuff. The design is completely over the top, but at the same time, it's not. Like, it's neither here nor there. The performance slightly edges out some of the other 3080s that we've seen, but the reality is, these 30 series cards don't overclock well. The, the tiny little morsel that we saw with the extra performance from the Aorus Extreme card is probably not enough to make you actually want to go out and buy this card, given that it's probably going to cost far more than any other 3080 out there. The only reason why you'd actually want to buy this card is if you really like Aorus cards and you have to have that screen. Personally, the, the, the screen is, is cool, but it's just not something that I'd personally use on my own. Like I just wouldn't use that feature. I'd look at it maybe once or twice, but that'd be the end of it. Lastly, what I'm going to say is even if you could buy this card, which you probably can't at the time of filming this video, I'd still wait to see what the Radeon 6000 series brings to the table because we just don't know yet. So if you can wait, I probably would. Pricing is available for this card, but again, the availability is next to zero. I've only got the Australian pricing as well. They're retailing for about 1,750 Aussie dollars. And if you convert that to US dollars, it's probably gonna be around 1,200 US dollars, give or take. If you know how much it's actually gonna cost, let me know, I'm actually curious to know. Anyways, guys, that's basically all I got to say. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated this video, you know what to do. Hit that dislike button twice, tell us what you hated about it, tell us what we did wrong. That's basically what the internet likes to do. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. And I've got a question for you guys. We've got the 3080 Eagle and we've got the 3080 Vision from Gigabyte. So we've got basically all of Gigabyte's range. Yeah, I know, weird flex. But what I want to know is if you guys want to see individual videos with the Eagle and the Vision or if you want to see them compared to each other. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Let me know if I'm going to waste my time with those cards. Thanks for watching.